So one thing in the DMs that we got a lot of is uh, questions about us and never before heard stories between Clive and me. So we thought that for the Christmas special, we would take some of your DM questions and answer them for real in real life time right now. Uh, we have a lot actually, so this is going to be more than one episode, but um, should we start with a couple now? Yeah, hit me. So um, I actually, I know that you have a Christmas story to relay. I actually, this is the God's honest truth, don't know what it is. So I'm going to be hearing it for the first time, but I actually want to, um, what's your Christmas story on set? When you no, I just remember, I just remember Christmas in Dublin being so special. Um, the first two seasons, we didn't do as many episodes. So we always finished around November time and we'd have a wrap party and it would be you know, slightly chilly around Dublin. But then when we went to season three onwards, we were filming 20 episodes. So we would film right the way through the Christmas break. I remember that we had a, a lot of us used to stay in Dulkey, which is about 25 mm. minutes outside of Dublin. And there was, um, there was, there was a couple of bars that we would frequent quite um quite a lot I just remember it snowed we were on set and we were filming in the snow and it just didn't stop and it came down and it was one of the last days on set it felt like you know wrapping on a white Christmas um and we went to the bar and I remember people were driving this is typical um island people are driving up the road in Dulkey and there was this one guy who was like slowly just slightly just kissing the cars on either side of the road because the the icy black ice on the road and eventually just gave up and just dropped his car in the middle of the road, it's like a one-way street because there's cars parked on either way. There's only enough room for one car. Just stopped it in the middle of the road, got out, boop, boop, and just went into the pub. And everyone did the same thing. <laughs> everyone just started parking in the roads. The roads, it was just chaos. I have no idea how they got home. Hopefully they didn't drive anyway. So they're probably there in the morning, covered in snow. But it was oh crazy. God. I mean, we have so many crazy stories. And you know, there's nothing better than being in Dublin in the in the winter time and sitting in one of those bars with the you know the log fire and people coming in with their instruments and just playing some of the old Irish songs, the Wild Rover and you know the Rocky Road to Dublin and all that kind of stuff, playing in the background with a with a pint of Guinness in your hands. Yeah, I miss I miss Ireland. I had so many pinch me moments there, and I had traveled there before as a tourist or you know I had gone there with a ballet company before but it there was something about really integrating there because we were there for so long and we had so many Irish friends in the crew and production so we were kind of embraced weren't we into the community there and it was just like oh man it's just beautiful I miss it dearly and we did actually we did have an amazing Christmas party I remember I've just got um I remember Gustav turning up with these crazy reindeer glasses on and we were all dancing and we were doing the dirty dancing lift on Alyssa. Uh, it was pretty crazy. We had we had pretty intense parties. We partied like Vikings on set and off set. Yes. And it was always interesting to walk into because most people in the area knew about Vikings, especially a couple of seasons on. But um, we would sort of walk in en masse to a bar or something. And all of you guys are so gigantic anyway, you know, six yeah. foot, who knows what. Um, but to kind of walk in and there was like, very clearly the vikings cast <laughs> i remember in, in season uh, when i when i became the duke of normandy i did a film in between um vikings and i had to shave my head so in season one to three it's all my own hair with some hair extensions yeah. a big long hair but then i had to wear a wig when i was you know duke rollo which kind of made sense because it's a completely different haircut anyway and it worked but i remember it was weird when we went out to the bar um at christmas time and uh, it was around christmas time so there would be like travis gustav alex and they all got their long hair and things and they're all so recognizable and i'd be there with my beard but with really short hair um and i remember this one time i was in the bar and this guy comes over he's like sorry sorry guys are you the vikings and they're like yeah yeah oh i love this show and it's great and, and they're like oh oh it is it's it's Bjorn. oh it's travis it's ragnar and they're like where's rollo we hate that c-u-n-t oh, no. um <laughs> And I'm standing there, they're all pointing at me and they're like, that's not Rollo. I'm like, I'm a stunt double. Yeah, he doesn't come out. He is, he is a C-U-N-T. He doesn't bother hanging out with anyone. So, I mean, like, yeah, they prefer to hang out with me, the stunt double. Clive, Clive Standen. Clive yes. Standen. Is, it, is it weird for you? I mean, you've been, a, you've been an actor for a long time now. And it's been, I have two questions for you. What is, what's the experience been like for you as your fame has grown? I mean, you're recognizable. You've been the lead of several very big shows. Um, it, is it, because I don't think a lot of people ever get that uh, experience of having people recognize you on the street. And then also, how do you deal with people who seem to think that Clive is Rolo? So any transgressions that Rolo has had, they think that Clive is that person. How do you deal with that? 
everyone's been really nice. I mean, on Instagram, people are always like, traitor! But it's still just a bit of fun. I did have, um, I did have, where was I filming? I was in Toronto filming Taken. And uh, I used to walk down this one road and uh, there would be people that worked in this office building. They'd wave at me and they'd know it was me. And I, I remember the first time I went by, they're like, that's Rollo. And then one day I went by, it was really sweet. They had, because the, it was like the second floor of these offices and they had these windows that you could see. And I remember walking by one day and they'd put up in the window, hey, Rollo, you traitor. And in these massive <laughs> banners, so that was there for like three weeks every time I walked past it, and it was yeah. So it's all a bit of fun. Um, so no one, I mean, I just I I thrive off of it at the moment. I mean, going to these comic cons uh, and getting to share the stories with the fans is really quite special, more so than ever now in the lockdown because I've really missed being around people. You know, we went to German Comic Con, and the first thing we did when we were in the line to meet the fans is take down these plastic visors they put in the way, throw them down. I'm like, I need human contact. I want to hug the fans, talk to the fans, be around people. I needed it. I mean, I said to said to them, it felt like I topped my happiness bank up being there. So it's not just you know the fans getting to meet the actors. I thrive off of it. Um, it's been really special. I mean, it's to be the show that I would watch even if I wasn't in it. I mean, I am a Vikings geek, so it's great. And you know, everything I've done so far. I mean, I've played. I've done a lot of American accents. There's always people at the bottom of the comments. You're an American accent. It's not very good. Whatever it is, there's always <laughs> one, you know, and that obviously stays with you rather than the, you know the 50 people that say something nice about you. But that's what I've learned to do, and I tell my kids this as well. You cannot respond to that one troll because that's what they want you don't you don't get we got so many fans sometimes you don't have time to respond to the nice stuff so why should you respond to the to the awful stuff because that's why it's there yeah. um yeah, yeah you're it's, right it's a weird thing isn't it because i because for suddenly so many people who you don't know to have a really strong opinion about you and not only that to post it publicly yeah. it's did christian weird. bale say once he was like hey if you've got a problem with me, call me. If you don't have my number, then you don't know me well enough and you don't know who I am. So go the fuck, leave me alone. <laughs> mm, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. It, but you know, I am guilty of where I've done that thing where I've really loved a show and I've got really invested in it. And then I, I've, I did this um, with, oh, I can't remember her name now. She's a lovely gal. She was on Game of Thrones and she played, um, anyway, she played one of the characters, I can't remember. But I, I loved her, I thought she was great. And uh, I went to an audition and she was in the waiting room. And of course I walked in and I was like, oh my gosh, hi, how are you? Thinking that I knew her. And I was like, no, I don't know her. I watch her on the TV. So she doesn't know who I am. She's very nice. One thing that I wanted to say to all of our lovely listeners, Clive, you and I both wanted to say that uh, you guys are so amazing in the DMs, hitting us up in the DMs. It is, there's so many in fact that we, um, we just wanted to say that we do see them. We see them. We love them because we love getting your feedback. And um, we have lots of plans to record them and do shout outs. It's just a lot, which is amazing. Aren't we blessed? But we do see them and we love you for it. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're building the content. We're taking all of your ideas, all of your suggestions down because this is just in the in the birthing stage of Vicast. So we're you know we're concentrating on getting the cast mates um, on and interviewed, but we're also trying to think about new segments all the time. And we've got some great ideas from you guys. So watch this space. And as you know, birthing is complicated and sometimes painful. But no, it's been <laughs> it's been pretty lovely. But uh, yeah, we're just like we wish we had a hundred more brains and hands and thumbs to type with. But thank you so much. Talking about birthing, I wanted to ask you a question. I've always thought about this. How was it to be on the set of Vikings and being pregnant? Because I'm not sure if everyone knows this, but Amy was pregnant with twins while she was filming some of the episodes of Vikings, and she had a really intense battle scene to do in a tower with Mo Dunford's character, Athelwolf. Can you tell us a little bit about it, Amy, and what it was like to actually kind of, you know, the one, the story about how you kind of found out that you had twins while you were filming, but what, you know, how strenuous it was kind of, because our show is it's pretty intense at times. Oh gosh, yeah. I remember when I when I found out that I was I was going to be pregnant. I knew we were I was going to be shooting while I was pregnant, um, and I was kind of trying to find a way to tell our producers and tell Michael who writes the show. And then I found out it was twins, and I was like, oh damn. Ooh. So uh, I I called Michael. I remember I was in London. I was in Soho, and I kind of tucked away into a busy little thing and um alcove and i said oh you know michael and and he was so lovely immediately replied congratulations and i said and i'm going to be pregnant with twins and he said i just wrote you a big fight scene like i just wrote it like what are we gonna do <laughs> um but we worked it out and with the timing of the they had to rejig my schedule a lot because i think that they had wanted to shoot it a lot 
uh, later in the season, but we had to bump it up. But the farthest that they could bump it up, I was six months, like fully six months pregnant with twins, which is big. I was big. It was hard. Um, I, but you know, the naivety, that's, that was my first pregnancy. And sometimes as a mom, like your first kid and your first pregnancy, you do a lot of stuff that the following pregnancy, she go, what was I thinking? That was insane. <laughs> I, and my, you know, and then I've had a third kid now and I'm just going like, oh, hell no, 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 no. You're not kidding me on a film on a TV set doing a two full stunt phase, not to mention all of the stunt rehearsals. And I have tape actually I should release some of that I have some uh videotape of my stunt rehearsals and I was like throwing my poor old pregnant body onto the ground and oh it you was getting strangled and things oh getting God. thrown at you it was really intense it's actually do you know what I think it's one of the most intense uh one-on-one -on -one battles we've had you know not one from Mo down at the bottom of the tower to you at the top of the tower I mean it's it's hard to watch anyway but it was yeah. it's pretty intense from both of you well, I, all credit goes to, uh, I had, um, the, all the gals who were doing it with me were stunt actresses and they were simply amazing. And they, it, it's incredible. Cause when I watched it back, I mean, I was like, holy crap, I'm just getting brutalized, but they were like holding me with kid glove. They did this beautiful kind of like, you know, they come out with my ferocity, but really they're holding me like this, you know? And so I was anything that I was being thrown down against or thrown against the wall was me choosing to do how hard I wanted. And they just had their hands on me. So they were, they were incredible. And then I had for some of the uh, moves that were just too dangerous, I had uh, a brilliant gal called Aoife, shout out to you. Um, she's amazing. She did some of my double stunt work for that, but uh, it was good. I, there was another scene that I remember doing with Linus and I had to, it was just, it was when I find out that he's betrayed me and I had to rush at his desk. And by that time I was seven months pregnant. I had to rush at his desk and like slam into it with my belly and um, like take all the things off of his desk and just scream at him with rage. And the well, this is was, not cool. Yeah, this is not cool. <laughs> I was like, how dare you? Yeah, I was just full rage. And the babies were going nuts inside of me. They were just like, bang, 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 bang. I was going like, what are you doing up there? Like you're stressing us out. My heart was going so. Yeah, I'm not sure I would do that again. But but you also you. I've just been thinking you have. Um, you were one of the only women on set, other than Catherine Winnick, who plays Lagatha, to be involved in quite a lot of the big battles because Quentrith travelled on the boat with Ragnar and Rollo and the rest of the Vikings. Um, and then there was that. That was the the whole week when we did the the battle on the beach, and you were involved in all of that. I mean, what's it like yeah, yeah. to be in those scenes into a very very testosterone fueled, you know, hundreds of stuntmen, stunt girls running around and smashing together, and you're right in the thick of it with your character who is unarmed and just kind of almost getting some yeah. kind of orgasmic kind of fun out of watching all these men decimate each other. But um, I didn't. I didn't have to act dude. Like I truly didn't have to act like I just fully led into losing my cool. I was not cool about being on there. I was way too excited. I was overwhelmed. And I remember at one point they just put the camera on me and I was just like, I, this isn't acting. This is Amy going like, what? This is so bad. You know, it's incredible. And it was also cool because, you know, I know all of you guys, like you were my buddies and we palled around and I'd done lots of scenes with you, but previously I'd always been like in a chair doing a queen thing. And that was the first time I got to see all of you guys do your stuff. You flew off of the boat. I remember yeah. uh, into before deep. it had even, yeah, before it had even stopped. We wanted to be the yes. first on the boat. We were wading in the water. It was so much deeper than we thought it was as well. Yes. You're coming, <laughs> you're, it's a lake and you're coming up to the shore and you're thinking it's got to be just up to your knees. And everybody, we're all little children when we're filming Vikings. We're all like, I'm going to be first off the boat. But yeah, Rollo has to be the first off. Yeah. He wants to be the first off. But you're trying to judge it in your head thinking, I oh. I know that if I land up to my waist, I'm going to be slower because I'm going to have to wade out of the water. I want to just, the sweet spot is just above the knees and you can just <laughs> run onto the beach. But it was so much deeper. There was a couple of takes where we would just start yeah. and we would go straight up to our head. We literally like our axe would be like the, the, the periscope. I mean, like, I oh God, we're going to need another one because Rollo hasn't even got out of the water, but the battle's finished. Totally. Yeah, and, and I somebody, oh, it was Gaia, I think. She like twisted, oh, yeah, her, ankle. twisted her ankle. Do you remember? Because, yeah. because you guys were full on like I know you have to be safe and you learn the things but it was like yep. it was like watching a raging battle it was 
Oh, I, totally I awesome. I have these amazing uh, ankle supports that I got from Australian Rules Football, actually. They're like, they, they, you put them on and you strap them across each other and then you lace them up. And they saved my life because uh, the costumes we have, are, they try and be authentic. Like the boots that the Vikings wear on set, they've got no grips. They've got nothing because they didn't have grips back then. So they try and make it, I mean, they're obviously rubber soled and they're, they're made with modern materials, but, but they haven't got what you'd imagine to be, you know, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're nowadays is technology. Um, so, I mean, a guy came off, you jumping off those boats at like six, mm. seven foot in the air and you landing without any support in those boots at all. Um, and that's what happened to her. And I mean, I, I was lucky enough. I, I invested in these ankle supports and I wear them nearly every stunt scene I do in whatever that's film, smart. TV job I do, but they've saved my life so many times because that's all it takes. You're going back and forwards, back and forwards on uneven ground. And then and it, she was in so much pain, but she carried yeah. on like a trooper. Oh, she, she was carried amazing. on fighting. Uh, yeah. the, the take when it happened, she carried on fighting. I remember they they sat her down for a, an hour, and we um, we carried on filming different sections of the different fights. But then when she had kind of got her breath back and kind of felt, she was like, "I want to carry on doing this." And we got some really great footage, and she's there in the fight. Yeah, yeah I, I felt so lucky to be written in. I don't, you know, I who knows what goes on in the minds of uh, writers, but it was the beginning of season three. And I came back and I didn't really know what was in store for my character. And then Michael told me, you're going to be, you know, with the Vikings, you're going to do this and this. And I was like, I'm going to be on the ships. What? I have a video of my very first day on the ships with you guys. I think you are on a different one though, because I have video of was, waving to you. Yeah. I was yeah, waving to you. You were on Ragnar's ship with all the heads as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so it was, it was, it was uh, Travis and Gustav and Alex. I was on there, but I knew you were across. So I was waving to you. I have some video of going like, <laughs> yes, you were at the front, like, and you had amazingly long hair that season too, like better hair than me. It was like, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it was, it was super cool and it was really authentic. I mean, what am I saying? I don't know. I've never been on a real Viking ship. It looked real to me. You brought a lot of fun that day as well. I mean, everyone says that Travis is the as the prankster, but I'd say Amy was the trickster, and 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 she brought a bit of fun to the show. I remember you got us all spinning around. You know, the old barroom uh, game where you kind of get oh, yeah. like a broomstick and you run around <laughs> in your head, and then you try and run and touch the bar stool at the other end of the bar. But we had our axes. You know, you got my Dane axe, and I'm running around in circles like twenty times. And it was Jefferson Hall. Travis Fimmel and myself, and we did That's a right. race. Amy organized it all. We think we got the footage somewhere. We'll have to release that on Vicast. But yeah, obviously it ended in in everyone falling over and going all over. I think over I have shop. some. I think I have some footage. I'm going to go through my old phone. I have some footage of uh, I got Travis and George singing some musical tunes. Travis singing. Yeah, I, I pestered him all the time. I was like, come on, baby, you know you want to sing a, a, a good old song with me because I come from musical theater, right? So yeah, I got him. I got to find that. My funny story was when I was in a black cab, actually. Um, I'm sitting in the back of the black cab, minding my own business. And this guy, the, the, the taxi driver, just turns around. He takes a little glance at his mirror and he goes, uh, that's quite a fine beard you've got there, mate. And I'm like, thanks, mate. He goes, oh, yeah, how long did it take you to grow that? And I'm like, oh, a couple of months on my superpower. And he's like, well, you should go on that Viking show. You should audition. <laughs> I'm serious. You know, and I'm like, yeah, that, that, yeah, I've, thought, I've watched a few episodes. And he's like, no, you should. You should be a bit extra, something like that. They're looking for people like you. How tall are you? And I'm like, six or three. Oh, all right, you should be a Viking. <laughs> then we carry on driving a little bit longer. And he suddenly starts talking about the show a bit more. And he's like, oh, I love that show. Ragnar Lothbrok. Love, love him. <laughs> Ragnar Lothbrok, he's the guy. Oh, but that, that brother, though, that brother is such a prick. Oh, I can't stand the brother. You, you know what I'm talking about. What's his name? And I'm like, Rollo. Yeah, I bet he's, I bet he's an absolute dick in real life. <laughs> and then suddenly he's he's driving and then he takes one another glance in the mirror and he goes fuck me you are the brother and he nearly crashes the, the taxi into the central reservation and i'm like whoa 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 <laughs> he pulls over I'm, I'm actually really late for something but it just this became such an amazing story and he's uh and he pulls over and he's just like turns around he literally like leans over and he's just asking me all these questions oh my god it's my favorite show can i have a selfie oh you're actually really nice in real life oh, for and i'm like well that's i'll take that as a backhanded compliment <laughs> yeah isn't that nice when they're like oh you're not an asshole I'm like yeah. nope just an actor who plays one <laughs> that's cool i get i get a lot of um i get recognized i get i get weird sort of looks like this and people, I had someone in the grocery store came up and she was really, and I thought she was just being rude. She's giving me these nasty old looks. And then she came up to me and she just went, I know who you are. <laughs> yeah, I know. And she, you know, said something about how I was like a, you know, sex obsessed killer. It's like, ah, yeah, cool. Yes. <laughs> Here I am with my three kids grocery shopping. Not today. <laughs> I'm not that. 
Ooh. I remember I said, they're, they're one of the oh. nicest moments. Uh, one of the nicest moments we had was um, at Comic Con for, for me anyway, because he's a hero of mine. But we were in a we we're in a loading lift. I think it was Gustav, me, uh, Catherine, and and uh, Travis um, on the way to San Diego Comic Con in one of those loading bay lifts. You're going up backstage, and we were in a lift with Daniel Radcliffe and some of the people that he was in a film with. And in the corner was Guelmo del Toro. And everybody was talking about Daniel Radcliffe and asking about Harry Potter and things. And I just saw Guelmo del Toro in the corner and I was like, God, I don't know what to say to him. You know, it's like, he's like one of the hero of mine. He's in the same lift as me. Yeah. And, and you could see he was looking at me and he was like, don't say anything. Yeah. Cause I you just, you know, you, I'm like, what was I going to say? Yeah. It's like, it was like, he looked right at me and smiled. And then um, Daniel Radcliffe, we got off the lift, we went higher. I remember Daniel Radcliffe said like, oh, those guys were great. What, what, what show were they in? And I heard Guelmo del Toro say, those, my boy, were the Vikings. And Rollo was my favorite. <gasps> he said it because I didn't say anything to him. And he knew I knew who he was. And it was such a sweet thing to say, whether he meant it or not. It was just one of, for me, the lift carried. And I just heard Guelmo well, the tourist said that. And I'm like, he knows who I am. Yeah. And that was like, yeah. Oh, it's funny like, who we get, we get starstruck by, right? Yeah. No, it's interesting. And then, and then talking about manifesting, I, um, I was telling this story to somebody quite recently. And then I went to a screening of this amazing film called Jockey. Um, Clifton Collins Jr. is in it. I think he should win an Oscar. I mean, or at least get nominated. He's fantastic. But um, I literally two days later, I told that story to someone and I sat down into the screening at my agent's uh, building and Guelmo de Toro is doing the question and answers right there in front of me. And I'm like, oh my God. It's just come back into my life again. And I'm right, right in front of him again. And I actually gave, I went down and, and uh, I got introduced to him and shook his hand and he said, Della Rollo. Oh, so come on. Well, that's, and that's it. And then I went, hi, and ran away. I didn't say anything <laughs> to him. And I still, I still keeps me up at night going, I didn't talk to him. I didn't say how much I thought he was an amazing director and how much I want to work with him. But. Oh, that's awesome. I love this. Um, so, oh God. Okay. So I have a list, Clive, even though I'm your buddy, I do have a list of about 30 more questions that I want to ask you that uh, I've never heard the answer to. I want to talk about the first time we met each other. Cause I have two funny stories about that. Really funny. I remember like the moment that I saw you two, two different times. They're very funny. Um, one of them in involves Catherine Winnick and her boobs. Uh, and, <laughs> and so Clive and I just, we have, we have a lot more that we want to talk about. It's hard because we don't have the time to fit it all in once we could go we on and on. We just wanted to give a special Christmas, a Christmas episode out for you guys. So this is a taster of what's to come, but hopefully it'll keep you uh, appetized over the new year. And, uh, and you can join us back in 2022 for some extra more in-depth conversations between Amy and I. And we just love those DMs because it gives us um, it gives us ammunition and fuel and uh, gives us a lot more to talk about. Because the truth is, we could just go on and on and on with each other because that's what we do on our phone calls, isn't it? But uh, when we're recording, we like answering specific questions from you. Thank you so much. We hope you guys have a beautiful Christmas and we can't wait to show you some of the new guests that we have in store for you. Lots of good stuff.